Welcome to Papa Junk Shop. Well, I figured it was time for a battery monitor. Um, hopefully, pretty soon I'll be able to switch batteries from uh, my Edison batteries, which are really old and getting tired and getting chemicals anymore is such a hassle. Um, I could flush them out and mix up a new batch of electrolyte and put in them and they'd probably be good again but I'd like to try the lithium ones anyways because the Edison batteries are great as far as being tough and forgiving but they're not very efficient I guess you'd say because you don't get near as much out as you, as you put in so that's another reason why I'd like to switch out to the newer technology I guess so I thought I'd get a battery monitor and I looked at a bunch of them and I decided to go with this one got it on Amazon um, I know I've been sort of reviewing but not really things and nobody's given them to me so uh, it's not something that's sponsored by anybody. Wish it was, but it's not. <laughs> so, this is the one I decided on. It seemed to have a lot of nice features and the price was reasonable. Um, it comes with a meter itself. And a 350 amp. Yeah, it says 80 volt, 350 amp. They make different ones. I opted for the 351. So this is the, I don't know, call it a smart shot or exactly what, but. And you get a cable, and this is to mount it in a panel, I guess. So, I guess that's all the goodies out of the box. So, we got some literature here. I've heard that this literature isn't great. Voltage range 8 to 100. Power consumption um, must be that means typical 10, maximum 12 milliamps. Standby consumption 0.5 to 0.6 milliamps. Sleep consumption 50 to 60 microamps. Voltage accuracy plus or minus 1%. Current accuracy plus or minus 1%. Capacity accuracy plus or minus 1%. Um, capacity range 1 to 999 amper hours. Current range uh, I got the 350, so 0 to 350, maximum 500. Temperature range 20 to 35 Celsius, backlit on current 1500 or 150 milliamps. Backlight off current 38 and 110 milliamps. Weight 200, 274, 10. So apparently the, that's for the three different sizes. Meter size, uh, 59 asterisk 20 millimeters. Panel cut out, 54.5 millimeters. Um, here's some instructions here. And some diagrams. So, I'm going to hook it up on the bench and play with it before I install it. So. I'm going to hook it up and we'll see what it does. Okay, I got it hooked up. This is all temporary. None of the colors are right. So don't yell at me for that. Um, this is the negative from the battery. And this red one is actually the negative. I got it run over here to the inverter. And this is going to be where I hook up a charger. And this clip wire is the 
plus to uh, feed power to the, to the meter. So I'm just going to clip that over here on the battery. I'm assuming that's where it gets its battery voltage from too. So if I plug this in there it should fire up I think. So do I have to use this cable? Maybe. Yeah, I guess I do. I don't know, might as well want to do it then. I thought it'd be better to play with it without that. Yep, she came to life. Okay, so... I haven't looked at any instructions yet, so normal operation. So this is... Press the oh, instructions are crappy. To do voltage changes. No, I'm not getting any voltage in the face. I'm gonna have to hold this. And for hours, amps. And for hours, amps. There we go. I don't know what I was doing wrong. So we got 12.84 for the battery. Okay. Press the button. That's awful to see. Okay, so I'm going to have to do some. Let me look at these instructions a little bit and see if I can figure figure out how to run this thing. Yeah, I guess to set the amper hour capacity of the battery, I have to hold this for three seconds. Seeing things right here. <laughs> Guess not. Alright, well, I'll have to figure it out. So it says 100 amp per hour. So let's uh, Turn on the inverter and see. We got it on the amps. Okay, so I got a little 250 watt heater plugged in. Let's 
looks like it's going to settle around 20 some amps. There's a little arrow down with a minus in it. I guess that means that we're taken away from the battery. 23 amps. Okay, there it says we got 99.72 amper hours left. So we push this. Now well, we got the battery. Now I'm using them old worn out stationary batteries, so it's going to change quickly. So go back to oops, wrong button. Let's go back to the amps and I'm going to turn the inverter off. So it's showing well, six or seven milliamps. Oh, I got a battery charger here. Just a little uh, six, six amp jobber. Let's see. Oops. Get that flat. Probably you guys can see it. But I'm gonna hook it up here. Charger up the right way, it might work. Good thing it's a little battery charger, huh? Okay, there we go. Showing the, the plus. And we're charging 5 amps. And apparently the background pulses and what does that. There's our, okay, our amper hours is going back up. So if I turn the inverter back on again, you should see, yep, goes to minus. And go back to amps. Okay, the battery charger was charging what, around 5 amps or so, and the inverter was around like 20 something, so some of the uh, battery charger is going directly into the inverter, and the rest is coming from the battery. I should read the instructions, but that's not near as much fun as doing it this way. Okay, when the charge or discharge current value is lower than the back light off current, the Meter will enter a low power state and the backlight will turn off. Okay.
Hm. Naja. I think she's going to work out pretty nice. Seems to have a lot of useful information, I guess. I'll show you when I get it actually hooked up. I pulled a little more with it. I reset the battery amper hour capacity for 25 just so I can see it moving better. <laughs> and I got it on bolts now. And if you uh, push this one, it'll give you the amps that I'm using. The inverter is on with that little heater, 24 amps, and that'll tell you the amper hours, and that'll tell you your battery capacity. So it's actually pretty simple once you play with it a little bit. Bolts. Amps, percentage. So nine amps, so if I hook the battery charger back up, that should drop. Yep, it did, right away. I turn the inverter off, we should get an arrow up with a plus. And the background pulses. And I haven't, well, I just kind of roughly looked at the instructions. I haven't seen it say why it does that, but. See the percentage is going back up. Okay, I guess that one does that. Oops. Inverter back on, goes right down. Of course, the voltage is just going to drop because these batteries are not good. Remove the battery charger. Okay, seems to be pretty responsive and Looks like some pretty useful information. I actually took a few minutes and read some of the instructions. So this is going to stay lit like that when there's uh, current going out of the batteries. And when it's charging, it will blink. And if there's nothing going on, the display will go, uh, backlight will go off. So, that explains that. Okay, I hooked my, hope you can hear me, hooked my big battery charger up. I want to see what happens when it gets up near the, uh, near the end of the charge. What happens when it gets to 100%. Like it just stays stays at a hundred percent. Okay. So it 
turn that off. Turn the inverter back on. And it shows the minus right away. dropping again. Okay, just playing around. So, I went and looked at my situation to install this. And the way my Edison batteries are uh, wired, I've, I've got them on a, a cart and I've got some I don't remember what size welding cable it is, but it's really big. Um, so I can move them out to check the water and stuff. And it's just not going to be a friendly install, so I don't think I'm going to install this until I get my uh, lithium batteries, which I hope isn't going to be in too long from now. So I guess I'll put this video up, and maybe some of you guys will like the looks of this thing and want to look into one. So if you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed, please do. Thanks for watching. You know I'm not very professional and uh, I'm not very good at video, but I have fun. So, hope you did too. See you next time.